Hello, Mrs H here. You have to learn different statistical tests for A-level biology. Different types of data require different statistical tests and you have to know which test to use and why. This video will take you through two examples of using the chi-squared test step by step. Check out biologybreakdown.co.uk for supporting sheets and more examples. The chi-squared test is used to see whether the difference between the observed and expected data is significant or due to chance. You don't have to remember the formula, but you do need to know how to use it. There are steps to follow when carrying out any statistical test. First, you have to state your null hypothesis, then decide which statistical test to use and why, carry out the statistical test, Find the critical value at p equals 0.05. Compare your statistical test value with the critical value and write a conclusion and reject or accept the null hypothesis. We'll start with a simple example first. A student was investigating how many times each side of the dice was thrown out of a thousand throws. From this data, they can test whether the observed results are similar to the expected results or if there is a significant difference between what has been observed and what has been expected. Before carrying out the statistical test, a null hypothesis must be stated. A null hypothesis is a hypothesis that says there is no statistical significance between variables. Then we carry out a statistical test to see whether we can accept the null hypothesis or reject it. So in this example, the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the observed and expected data. In other words, there will be no significant difference between the number of times each number on the dice is thrown. To carry out the chi-squared, you need to add extra columns to your results table. You have your observed results, which we call O, then a column for your expected results, the observed result minus the expected, the observed minus the expected squared, and finally, the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. Because we are expecting each side of the dice to be thrown the same number of times, we simply need to divide the total number of throws of 1,000 by 6, which gives us 166.6 recurring. Then we can put that in our expected column. Then you can work out the values in the rest of the table. So look at the column observed minus expected. If we take 178, minus 166.6 recurring, that gives us 11.4, and then just fill in the rest of the data. Next, you need to square the observed minus the expected value. So 11.4 times itself gives you 129.96, and then fill in the rest of the column. And after that, you need to divide 129.96 by 166.6. That will give us 0 0.78. We're going to put a zero on the end because these figures are all going to be to three decimal places. And if you remember, you need to keep the same number of decimal places in a column to make it look consistent. And complete the rest of the column. Finally, you can find the sum of the last column, which is 15.59. This is your chi-squared value. You have now completed the formula. The chi-squared value is 15.59, but we need to understand what this means. We need to compare it to a critical value. Here is the critical value table. Notice on the left-hand side is a column DF. DF stands for degrees of freedom. There are six possible sides that a dice can land on in total. We call that N. Once the dice has landed on a side, we are only left with five other possible sides that could have been thrown. So degrees of freedom are the other possibilities, and this will be N minus one, or in this case, 
six sides minus one gives you five. You just need to remember degrees of freedom is n minus one. We now know the row we have to use, but we need to work out which column. So we use a p-value of 0 0.05. This is what we use in A-level biology. The critical value at five degrees of freedom and at p equals 0 0.05 is 11.07. It means if our statistical value is greater than the value in this column, the probability of our result being due to chance is less than 5%. Therefore, our results will be pretty significant. We need to compare our chi-squared value with the critical value. I find using this double-headed arrow diagram really useful. If you write the critical value in, then if your statistical value is less than the critical value, you place it to the left, which means you have to accept the null hypothesis. Our chi-squared value is greater than 11.07, so it falls to the right on this diagram. So we reject the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis was that there would be no difference between the observed and expected, no significant difference between the number of times you throw each side of the dice. So if we are rejecting the null hypothesis, then we are saying that there is a significant difference. Finally, we can write a conclusion. The chi-squared value of 15.59 is greater than the critical value of 11.07. So the null hypothesis is rejected. There is a significant difference between the observed and expected result. The number of times each side of the dice is thrown is significantly different to what we expected. In biology, you are most likely to come across using a chi-squared test when looking at phenotypic ratios. Let's take this one for example. When we cross two heterozygous purple flowered plants together, we would expect the offspring to be present in a three to one ratio. So in this example, three purple to one white. Two purple heterozygous plants were bred together and the offspring were 123 purple to 35 white. Is this a three to one ratio? The chi-squared will be used to see if there is a significant difference between our observed results and the ratio we are expecting. We need to state a null hypothesis and that would be there is no significant difference between the observed and expected. In other words, the offspring will fit a three to one ratio. We are choosing to use the chi-squared test because it compares the observed with expected and the data is categoric with frequencies. Everything else is the same before except for working out the expected values or results. Before we used a mean, but for phenotypic ratios, if we're expecting the results to be in a three to one ratio, because that's what Mendel says, then we have to put our expected in the correct proportion or ratios. To do this, you need to add the 123 purple plants to the 35 white plants. And that is the total number of offspring, which is 158. How do we put 158 in a three to one ratio? You divide 158 by four, giving you 39.5. And then you need to sort that out into your proportions, your ratios there. So three times 39.5 is 118.5 to one times 39.5, obviously 39.5. That is your 158 plants in a three to one ratio. Put these values in the expected column and then carry out the statistical test as before. You end up with a chi-squared value of 0 0.684. The chi-squared value of 0 0.684 needs to be compared with a critical value. This time we have two phenotypes, so the number of categories n is two, which means the degrees of freedom, n minus one, 
is one. Look as before at 0 0.05 for your p-value and you will find the critical value is 3.84. Let's use this double-headed arrow diagram again. Pop your critical value in, 3.84. The chi-squared value is less than the critical value, so we sit that to the left. We accept the null hypothesis. Then all we need to do is write the conclusion. The chi-squared value of 0 0.684 is less than the critical value of 3.84. So we accept the null hypothesis. There is no significant difference between the observed and expected. The offspring do fit a 3 to 1 ratio. Thanks for watching. You will find supporting sheets and more examples, including one for a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio at biologybreakdown.co.uk. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.